growth and pain. Those are two topics that we are going to discover. We are going to try to understand. We're going to try to apply better to our lives in the first Nephi chapter 19 edition of Help Me Understand the Book of Mormon, my favorite verse. Welcome to the podcast and to the Facebook Live. And if you're watching on YouTube, welcome to that as well. It is exciting to have you along as we're just going through the Book of Mormon, trying to to understand it, trying to apply it more to our lives. I just want to tell you about two of my friends real quick uh, before we get into some of my favorite verses in 1 Nephi 19. The first one is Oil Vault, not your grandpa's oil vial. They are credit card sized, nearly indestructible, leak proof guarantee containers for uh, that carry oil for blessings. It's perfect for carrying around with you in your wallet, having in your car, in your glove box, 72-hour kit, wherever you need uh, to take oil for blessings. It's an awesome gift idea for kind of a little fun spiritual gift. There's a link in the podcast description that gets you deals only for the podcast listeners. And today, if you're on the Facebook Live, or just go check it out, or um, if you're listening to the podcast, I'll just tell you about it. I'm wearing my Idaho tie from thetownandco.com. And a cute little Idaho tie. It's uh, black with some blue dots on it and a fish at the bottom, salmon. Idaho known for its salmon fishing. And Maybe the ties that I have are a good description of why you would buy a town and co tie. I have one for Idaho because that's where I live, one for Utah because that's where I grew up, one for Oregon because that's where my wife grew up, and one for the Philippines because that's where I went on my mission. I have a brother serving in the military in Germany, so I'll be sending him the Germany tie for Christmas. Uh, I have a brother and uh, my father in law who served in England, one who served in Japan. So whether it's missions or where you live or where you grew up or family heritage, you can find a t the townandco.com. You can find a town and co tie. There is a discount code only for my podcast listeners, BOM20, BOM, Book of Mormon, BOM20 that you can use at checkout for 20% off. First Nephi chapter 19 is a powerful chapter. It's going to start us off, lucky for you, with a couple of Isaiah chapters. So 19 kicks us off, and then in 20 and 21, we're going to do Isaiah. Yay, Isaiah chapters. <laughs> um, but we're going to understand the Isaiah chapters. We're going to apply them to our life. We're going to see what we can learn from the Isaiah chapters. So first Nephi 19, some of my favorite verses. I'm going to start with verses 9 and 10, where... Nephi is trying to teach his brothers about the Savior and the life of the Savior. So he's talking about the Savior in, in 9 and 10. He says, The world, because of their iniquity, shall judge him to be a thing of naught. Wherefore they scourge him, and he suffereth it. And they smite him, and he suffereth it. Yea, they spit upon him, and he suffereth it. Because of his long suffering, because of his loving kindness, and his long suffering towards the children of men. And the God of our fathers, who were led out of Egypt, out of bondage, and also were preserved, in the wilderness by him, yea, the God of Abraham and of Isaac and the God of Jacob yieldeth himself according to the words of the angel as a man into the hands of wicked men to be lifted up according to the words of Zedek, to be crucified according to the words of Nehem, to be buried in a sepulcher according to the words of Zenus, which he spake concerning the three days of darkness, which should be a sign given of his death unto those who should inhabit the isles of the sea, more especially given unto those who are of the house of Israel. The life, mission, and death of the Savior kind of encapsulated in two verses. He's going to come to the earth. He's going to suffer. He's going to have these incredible things done to him and he suffereth it because of his loving kindness and his long suffering towards the children of men. He'll be ki killed, uh, buried in a sepulcher, resurrected, um, coming forth the third day. Here's a quote from Keith R. Edwards from October 2006. It's an interesting idea. It's an interesting thought. So, uh, well, I'll just read it for you. 
as we are called upon to endure suffering, sometimes inflicted upon us intentionally or negligently, we are put in a u unique position. If we choose, we may be allowed to have new awareness of the suffering of the Son of God. Well, Alma tells us that Christ suffered all that any of us will ever have to suffer, that he might know how to succor us, the reverse may also be true, that our suffering may allow us insight into the depth and magnitude of his atoning sacrifice. As I have pondered events with my own son many years ago, it has provided new insights and perhaps even deeper understanding of the magnitude and magnificence of the atonement. I have a deeper appreciation of what a father was willing to allow his son to go through for me and for each of us. I have a new personal insight into the depth and breadth of the atonement. I could not imagine that I would willingly have let my son suffer, even in this small way, and our father so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Keith R. Edwards, October 2006. That, the, the scriptures that quote and, and this study question all are found in the Help Me Understand the Book of Mormon study guide that you can get at helpmeunderstandlds.com. So it, it, that's an interesting concept that the Savior understands our suffering. And one of maybe the reasons, the purposes, the at least the byproducts of our suffering, our pain, the difficulties and challenges that we go through is we come to better understand God. We come to better understand our Savior through suffering and through experiencing pain. And so there's an application question that this leads us to think, okay, the life mission and um, purpose of the Savior's life was to come down. And he experienced extreme pain and difficulty. And in verse 9, it keeps saying, and he suffereth it. Scourge me, suffereth it. Smite me, suffereth it. Spit upon me, suffereth it. And we come to better understand the Savior then as we experience and have to suffer through, um, whether it's pain or um, neglect or, or people mistreating us or whatever the challenge is that we face. So um, think of this application question. Write down one or two ways you have come to better understand and appreciate the suffering of the Savior because of the suffering that you've been through. And I thought about this for myself. I, I do think it's interesting. At least one, I think an area where I have grown to become more Christ-like because of the suffering that I've gone through is in the area of compassionate concern for others. Because I've been through pain, and it's not always pain that's visible. It's not always pain that anybody else would know. Most of the struggles and the pain that I have are very personal, private things that if you saw me at church or saw me at Cub Scout meeting or saw me anywhere else and around and about, you might not realize or understand or appreciate. And so sometimes maybe if, you know, I, I, I'm acting sullen at church, you might think, well, gosh, that guy's just kind of a jerk. Well, I don't think I'm necessarily a jerk. Some people might, but I don't think I'm necessarily a jerk. Uh, and it's probably not that I'm I'm trying or purposely trying to be jerky. I'm just probably having a very painful day. So what that has done for me is it's allowed me to have grace for others. That as others, as I look at others, before I quickly judge them and say, well, gosh, that guy just seems to be kind of a jerk. I think, well, gosh, that guy must be going through something. Uh, in the recent general conference um, that, that we just had, I'm trying to remember the speaker, but it's not coming to me offhand, but he talked about how um, he was given counsel by from President Packer, I think, that he's, you know, when you talk with people, imagine that half of them are going through just an extreme difficulty. And and then you'll, you'll you know, you'll probably be right at least half the time. And, and he said, I, I think President Packer's percentage was too low, that so many of us are going through challenges and pain and trial. And one of the things that I've learned to become more like the Savior in going through that is not to so quickly judge others, not to so quickly think negatively of them. The Savior was great at this. He, he doesn't quickly negatively think 
uh, or, or quickly think negatively of the woman taken in adultery or, um, you know, even some of his apostles had histories that were not what the, the Sadducees and the Pharisees and the religious leaders of the time thought would qualify people. I mean, he was picking fishermen and tax collectors and, uh, you know, people who may not have quite been what the religious leaders at the time thought he should have picked as, as some of his key leaders in the church. Uh, picking, you know, he, he wasn't quick to judge Saul for his past in selecting him to, to become the, the great apostle Paul, right? He was willing to accept people and, and grow people. And I, I've tried to do that better because of the suffering and the pain that I've been through. And I hope you'll take a moment, get the study guide, help me understand LDS.com, go in, write down, or you can save it right to your iPhone or whatever device you have. And you, the, the fields you can type right into those fields and you can type some answers in at least. Um, but, but think about what have you learned and how have you become more like the Savior in the suffering you've gone through? All right, next two verses that I love, verse 15 and 16. Nevertheless, when that day cometh, saith the prophet, that they no more turn aside their hearts against the Holy One of Israel, when then will he remember the covenants which he hath made to their fathers. Yea, then will he remember the isles of the sea. Yea, and all the people who are of the house of Israel will I gather in, saith the Lord, according to the words of the prophet Zenos from the four quarters of the earth. When the day cometh that we will no more turn aside our hearts against the Holy One of Israel, then he will remember the covenants he's made to our fathers. As we turn to the Lord, the Lord turns to us. As we come closer to the Lord, uh, as it says in the Doctrine and Covenants, draw near unto me and I will draw near unto thee. Um, th there's this process of coming closer to God, feeling God coming closer to us. This is from Linda S. Reeves. The Lord has not forgotten you, October 2012. She says, I testify that the Lord has not forgotten you. Whatever sin or weakness or pain or struggle or trial you're going through, he knows and understands those very moments. He loves you. And he will carry you through those moments, just as he did Mary and Martha. He has paid the price that he might know how to succor you. Cast your burdens upon him. Tell your heavenly father how you feel. Tell him about your pain and afflictions and then give them to him. Search the scriptures daily. There you will also find great solace and help. That is our charge. We must feel and see for ourselves and then help all of Heavenly Father's children to feel and see and know that our Savior has taken upon himself not only all our sins, but also our pains and our suffering and afflictions so that he can know what we feel and how to comfort us. See a great connection between that quote from Sister Reeves, the quote that I shared earlier, the scripture that I shared earlier, um, verses 9 and 10 and 15 and 16, God suffered what, what he did because of his loving kindness and his long suffering toward the children of men. He went through what he went through specifically so he can help us, specifically so we have a source to turn to. We never have to feel forgotten, alone, cast off. As Sister Reeves started off, I testify that the Lord has not forgotten you. He knows and understands the moments you're going through. He loves you and he will carry you through those moments. So application question. God will remember us no matter where we are. What actions can you take this week to make sure you turn your heart towards the Savior? That scripture starts off with a challenge for us. Nevertheless, when that day cometh, saith the prophet, that they no more turn aside their hearts against the Holy One of Israel. As we turn to the Savior, the Savior's love, the Savior's compassion is there for us. Now, it's there for us even if we've turned away from the Savior, but we feel it with increased measure. We feel it with increased effect. We feel it with increased um, impact in our lives when we turn to the Savior. So we have to take proactive action and say, what can I do this week to turn to him? Uh, Sister Reeves gives you one recommendation. Tell him about your pain and afflictions and then give them to him. That's one recommendation. Another one, search the scriptures daily. There you will also find great solace and help. 
two recommendations that you might think about. Okay, th these are the two things I'm going to do. Hopefully this podcast helps. Hopefully this podcast gives you an opportunity to think deeply about the Savior, to think deeply about God's Word, not just superficially kind of read and skim over it, but really think deeply about it. Really think about the application and the impact that God's Word can have in your life. It's not about just reading the Scriptures. It's about studying them. It's about learning from them. It's about changing our lives because of them. And that's what I hope will happen for you with this study guide. Okay, next favorite verse is verse 23. Back in the day, this was a scriptural mastery, um, but uh, they have changed that now to doctrinal mastery. And to be perfectly honest, I'm not even sure anymore whether this is a doctor or master or not. But whether it is or not, gosh, it's a darn good verse. Verse 23. I did read many things unto them which were written in the books of Moses, but that I might more fully persuade them to believe in the Lord their Redeemer. I did read unto them that which was written by the prophet Isaiah. For I did liken all scriptures unto us that it might be for our profit and learning. One of the purposes of the scriptures is to liken them to us. He uses the scriptures. He uses the words of Isaiah. He's going to try to teach his two brothers, in particular, Laman and Lemuel, and he uses the scriptures. Here's Julie B. Beck from April 2004. One good way to start studying the scriptures is to liken them to ourselves. Some people start by choosing a subject in the topical guide that they need to know more about, or they start at the beginning of a book of scripture and look for specific teachings as they read through. For instance, when I was called to serve as a young woman leader, I bought a new set of scriptures. And as I read and marked those scriptures, I looked for things that would help me in my calling. Sometimes I put colored pieces of paper in my scriptures so I have quick access to topics or themes I'm studying. I have paper tabs in my scriptures for many of my favorite verses about repentance and the atonement, so I can find them easily as I ponder during the sacrament each week. I usually make notes about what I'm learning. Sometimes I keep those notes in my scriptures, and sometimes what I, I write what I'm learning in a separate notebook. Wow, great ideas from Sister Beck. I love it. She gives real tangible ideas of some things we can do. I do those things. I, I mark my scriptures in a certain way. I mark based on color. If a Scripture is about a certain topic. I mark it in a certain color, like everything about Jesus is in yellow. Everything about um, the, the first four principles of the gospel, faith, repentance, baptism, gift of the Holy Ghost, and then I've added endure to the end. I mark in red. Everything about the Godhead and, and the, the nature of the Godhead, I mark in green, um, Right, and so everything about the priesthood, I mark in purple. Everything um, about the plan of salvation, I mark in orange. And so that's how I've chosen to do it. I also use these really little sticky notes. You know the small ones, the kind of teeny ones? If you're on the Facebook Live, I'll show you. Um, in my scriptures, I have these little tiny sticky notes, and I'll write notes and just sticky note them into the bottom pages of my scriptures there. Um, I, I love my my big scriptures because I have lots of space to write. And now there's even, uh, if you heard the interview that I did with, with the gals who are, who started line upon line co.com, there's journaling editions of the scriptures now with even more space for you to write in ideas. Uh, right. But listen to the depth that sister Beck is describing. Um, going through and studying based on a topic in the topical guide, looking for specific topics, putting in colored pieces of paper, um, paper tabs in my scriptures so I can find particular topics, made notes of what I'm learning, even having a separate journal. All of those things are additional efforts that she's putting in. They take time. It takes effort. It slows you down. It's not quickly reading through the Book of Mormon as quick as you can. It's not just, you know, oh, I did a chapter today. I'm done. It's taking the time to really understand it. And again, I, I hope that this podcast is in line with what Sister Beck was trying to teach us about not just reading the scriptures, but really studying them, learning and applying so here's the application question. I, I, I encourage you to go back and review your study guide and, and think, what are some of your favorite verses that you've applied to your life? What can you do to make sure you continue to study and learn from the scriptures? What can you do to make sure that you're not just superficially um, 
listening to God's word, but that you're really putting it deep into your life the way that Nephi recommended by likening all scriptures unto us that it might be for our profit and learning and, and in the way that Sister Beck described. So I want you to kind of look backwards and think backwards. Okay, what is a scripture recently that's had a big impact on my life? And then look forwards. Again, the, this is why the study guide is so helpful. It, it makes a difference. Sister Beck mentions having a notebook and this study guide can be that for you. But you can go back and look and you can remind yourself. We're so quick to forget. I did this. I went back and looked at previous scriptures. We've been through 19 chapters now. First Eve and I went back and looked. And, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I wrote that thing. Oh, yeah. I, that was that insight I had when I was doing the podcast episode a, few, a, a couple of weeks ago. I was like, oh, yeah, I remember that as I was reading through that and pondering on that, that that was something I wanted to do differently in my life. And that's what true deep study of the scriptures should do for us. It should remind us to be better and different. And hopefully this does. Well, that's First Nephi chapter 19, a deep look at a couple of key verses. And hopefully that helps you better understand this important chapter. Hopefully um, we, we really take to heart verse 23 and, and work hard, put in the effort necessary to liken the scriptures to ourselves. What Sister Beck was describing there is not just you know, quickly sit down, read through the scriptures, put your scriptures down and run off. No, it's thinking, it's pondering, it's studying, it's learning from the scriptures. And I just so appreciate you being a part of the podcast. I, I so appreciate you taking the time to put this podcast in your life. Um, I just, my whole hope here is that listening to this will do some of that that you'll feel God's word, that you'll feel the Spirit speaking to you through God's word, that you'll feel uh, that, that drive to be just a little bit better, a little bit more like our Savior. My, my belief is that we're all doing the very best that we can, that in our personal circumstances, we're trying as hard as we can to be as good as we can. And I hope that this helps just a little bit to remind you that God does love you, that God is there for you, that God does care about you, and that God is calling you, come follow me, come be like me. And I hope we all feel of God's love and feel that pull to come closer to him. Thank you so much for participating. This has helped me understand the Book of Mormon.